Hey guys, what's up? It's Dean. This is your week's uh, member question. And in this video, we're going to be discussing what to do if you strain a muscle. So this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, and it's an it's an inevitable part of working out. Um, you're going to have muscle strains. You're going to sometimes push yourself beyond what you're capable of. Sometimes you're going to stretch too far. Um, and it's normal. So it's, it's not something that you need to be concerned about. Um, it's just something to learn from. Um, and it's, you won't always strain a muscle every time you do a particular movement. Sometimes your body has, maybe it hasn't recovered as much or it as it should have. Maybe you're just tired from your other workouts. Um, so, you know, it, it depends on, it depends on day to day factors. It's not just a, a blanket. Oh, if I do this, then I'll strain this muscle or I'll feel this muscle tear. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about um, what you should do in response to a muscle tear uh, what you sh and what you should not do, because I see most people doing what you should not do instead of what you should do. Um, and I'll also talk about kind of what happens, um, briefly explain the process of what happens um, when you tear a muscle. So um, basically, a muscle tear happens when you ask your muscle to do something that it's not capable of doing. Um, that could be... Um, when you ask it to do too much, either in terms of stretching too far or in terms of um, exerting a certain amount of force. And what happens um, during a muscle strain is the muscle fibers, the individual muscle fibers that make up the muscle as a whole, um, they tear, they break. Um, and this is actually a normal part of working out. Um, the the soreness that you feel the day after a workout is what's known as micro tears uh, in the muscle. And that's actually how you get stronger. The difference between this and a more significant muscle strain is that um, a, a more significant muscle strain, you'll feel a couple of days afterwards. Sometimes it's, you'll sometimes think of it as excessive soreness. Um, and it's accompanied by um, an inability to do things that you're normally capable of doing. So there's less strength. Um, it's more tender to the touch and stretching it doesn't and stretching it makes it more uncomfortable. Um, so the first thing I want to say is the one thing you shouldn't do uh, when you have a muscle tear and that is stretch it. You never want to stretch a muscle that has been torn. Here's the reason why. When you tear a muscle, your body's response to that is to make a knot, right? So if you tear your hamstring, let's just say for the sake of this discussion, these are your hamstring muscle fibers. When you tear that muscle, the response is for those, the remaining muscle to form a knot. And that's just your body's way of protecting itself. Um, and then if you try to stretch that knot, what you're actually going to be doing is stretching the muscle fibers that have not been affected by the muscle tears. So you've got part of the muscle that has been right moved into the knot and the remaining muscle fibers that are still active, you're trying to, you're trying to stretch those muscle fibers um, in the same way you would if you had the full muscle, right? So what's happening is you're overstretching the muscle fibers that ha haven't been torn yet, um, or you're trying to pull on a knot, right? And if you just pull on a knot, it's not going to come out. Um, so number one, don't stretch the, uh, don't stretch the muscle. Um, instead, you want to do some light strength work. So you want to do something that you are very capable of doing, something that doesn't come close to your, your maximum capability, your maximum strength capability. Um, so that might mean going for a walk instead of going on a jog. Uh, that could mean doing some light resistance work with bands instead of doing, um, you know, instead of doing weights. Um, and instead of doing yoga postures that focus on um, a lot of strength or that require a lot of strength or a lot of mobility, you can do more simple postures that don't go as deep into the, that don't go as deep into your mobility um, or don't require as much strength. Um, just a few examples so you kind of know what I'm talking about. If you have a hamstring tear, which is a really common tear, um, you don't want to stretch it. So instead of straightening the leg, we want to do things where we're bending the leg. We want to do some light hamstring work where we're feeling that muscle build strength but not lengthening the muscle. Um, in terms of your hip flexor, that's another really common muscle tear. Instead of stretching your hip flexor and doing a lunge or a lizard, we want to do some light strength work. So pressing your hand into your thighs, um, bend, bend hip, hip flexion, right? So bringing your knee upward toward your chest instead of bringing your leg back into a lunge. Um, and then the last example here is um, your rhomboids. So the muscles between your shoulder blades. That's another common muscle tear that I hear about. Um, so instead of stretching 
All right, instead of separating your shoulder blades and stretching um, your rhomboids, you wanna do some light muscle building, right? So we wanna do either some really easy banded work, doing some rows. You can lay on the ground and just do some scapular retractions, just flat on your chest. Um, but the common uniting theme of all of these is that we're doing really light, easy resistance work and we're not doing any stretching. Um, on top of this, for recovery, um, you wanna make sure that you're resting the muscle. So following this light strength work, you wanna make sure that you rest it. So elevation is helpful. So getting your leg, if you hurt your leg, right? We wanna get your leg above your heart. If your shoulders are, if you hurt your shoulders, um, then you wanna make sure that your shoulders are in a nice relaxed position. We don't wanna have poor posture, separating the shoulder blades further. Um, we wanna have a nice relaxed position for those muscles. Um, and then um, one other thing, don't ice. Um, so um, icing has actually been disproven as an effective method of treatment for injury. Um, it's actually really interesting that the guy who invented um, uh, the, the idea of rice, which is rest, um, icing, compression, and elevation, the guy who invented that recanted this strategy. He came out in 2014 and said that this is actually not an effective method of treatment. Um, so I know that that was hard for me to, a uh, hard concept for me to grasp because I was so used to icing everything that got injured. Um, but the reason why it's not helpful is because it actually restricts circulation. Um, and you want circulation in order to promote recovery. So you can use a combination of ice or cold therapy and hot therapy, because that will help with circulation. Um, but just solely using ice um, actually restricts circulation. So you don't want to do that. Um, you can use ice if you want to use it for pain relief temporarily, but I would not do, you know, I would not do 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off for two or three hours at a time, because that's that's going to delay the recovery. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to address in this video. Um, TLDR, the summary of this, if you tear a muscle, don't stretch it, do light strengthening. Um, you might need to skip a couple workouts for, uh, for a day or two, um, but for a light strain, you don't have to, you know, drastically change what you're doing. Just, just do a lot less um, for a couple of days and the muscle should get better. If it's beyond that point, if you notice bruising, um, if you notice that it's really painful to go about your day-to-day -day activities, then at that point you might want to get in contact with a physical therapist and figure out what you can do um, for treatment. But if it's a light strain, which is what most of us are familiar with, or excessive soreness, um, then you can just do some light strength work to help recovery, uh, avoid stretching it, and then in a couple days you should be able to get back to normal. And now you have a better understanding of what can cause that strain and hopefully you'll avoid it in the future. So that's it. That's your member question this week. What to do when you strain a muscle. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, leave a comment. If you have a question, if you have another suggested topic, let me know in the comment section. I'll be able to get to that uh, if it's a good question in the next few weeks. And uh, thank you for being part of the members area. I'll see you in the next video.